Welcome to the Coffee and Common Sense Podcast with Todd and Linda. Each week, we'll be talking about what's in the news this week and what's happening around the good old Fresno and Clovis area. Hey, this is a no-spin zone too, so we'll be keeping it real. Now your hosts, Todd and Linda Mitchell. So here we are again. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, March the 22nd? Uh, yeah. Um, yes, March the 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> seem to lose track of days these days. I know we do. Yeah. So we have quite a bit of news to cover with you today. Mm-hmm. And so Todd, why don't you start? Just going to dive right on into it. Yes. Okay. So last week we talked about everything that was going on in banking and uh, lo and behold, more things have unfolded in the last week. A lot of you are probably aware that Credit Suisse, am I saying that correctly? Yes. They've been on the brink for quite some time, and over the weekend, well... Um, and this, this isn't their first time they've been in trouble. No, they've been in trouble for, for quite, quite some bit, time, yeah. but NPR, as of yesterday, um, they posted this, the demise of Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse, uh, so Switzerland has long been a preferred place for the world's wealthy to stash their cash, but one of the country's biggest and oldest banks, Credit Suisse, collapsed over the weekend, forcing the Swiss government to broker a deal that saw rival UBS buy the bank for $3.2 billion. That's nothing. $3.2 billion? No. That's compared to the amount of funds that they have? Wow. What a deal. Pennies on the dollar. And then today... <laughs> Uh, The New York Times posted why more deals are likely to fall uh, because of Credit Suisse. And what they said is after Credit Suisse's historic shotgun sale to UBS over the weekend, the question now is whether the 166-year-old bank is the last domino to fall or the first. The likelihood of more deals is high, and in truth, they can't come soon enough. If we learned anything from the 2008 financial crisis, it's that banks and regulators need to get ahead of the problem before they metastasize. After Bear Stearns was sold to J.P. Morgan Chase in March of 2008, government officials started to push Lehman Brothers to do a deal, but Lehman Brothers management and board refused for months until it was too late. So, more to come? Something to keep your eyes on, and I know, uh, you know, we're not billionaires, and so it may Speak seem... Speak for yourself. I just haven't told you. It may seem that it doesn't impact us. However, it, it will, and so we just have to keep an eye on it. So right now, yeah. we're, all, we're doing okay. Well, so... What do you have, Mrs. Mitchell? <laughs> I have... So I, like, I have some ag clients, and, and we do sell some ag um, real estate. And so I like to follow what's going on in the ag industry. And with all the rain that's been going on, I know it's impacting our farmers. Typically they're- A lot of rain. Yeah, typically they're on the other side where there's not enough water and they're trying to figure out how much they're gonna have to pay per you know cubic square foot for water, et cetera. Right now we're at the opposite end. Mm-hmm. And, and I have to tell you, I was reading up this morning and there was some like Yellowstone type stuff going on. And uh, we are seeing over in Tulare County, so in case you didn't know, uh, there you, we used to have Tulare Lake, and Tulare Lake was one of the largest um, lakes aside from the Mississippi. It was once the largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi and the San Joaquin Valley's low spot. And so I'm gonna show you a picture of this, hold on. Right here. I don't know how well you can see that, but In the middle is the lake. And uh, this lake, about 100 years ago, it was drained due to the powerful Boswell farming empire. And uh, the rivers that were fed into it, everything kind of just dried up. The dam, Pine Flat Dam came up, and so lots of things stopped it. Well, now, it seems that all the water from the Deer Creek, um, the different creeks coming into it, the Kings River, they're all starting to flow into that area because it's a low area. And so the farmers out there have been very concerned. And so this is what their land is looking like, their farmland. And so apparently overnight, somebody came in and dug like this gully from those creeks to divert water from their farmland into the community of Alpa and Allensworth. Wait, so they diverted the water so it wouldn't flood their land and went another way? Well, what they, yes, they, 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 they dug like this gully, this trench, 
so that the water, instead of going towards their farmland and flooding their crops, would in turn go in the opposite direction and flood the town of Allensworth. Now, I, I don't know how many people have heard of this town. It's a very small community, very small, but these are people's homes. And so right now the people um, have been very stressed trying to figure out how to get the water diverted. And apparently the police department was called because they realized that this does not happen naturally. Somebody intentionally did this. So that's a player right out of John Dutton's play, play the book, right? <laughs> it definitely is. And I just thought Didn't that was- Didn't he move a river? Oh, yes, he did. He did. I mean, I can't stop the river from flowing. We want you to stop it, Ron. We should move it. He did. And then also, the other thing that happened is um, Boswell went in and they did what they call a land plane. And a land plane is you, he put a heavy piece of equipment used to scrape the earth on the banks of the Homeland Canal. And when he does that, the um, water district there is not allowed to move it, to touch it. So in this picture, and I don't think you can see, but right in here is the land plane. And so now the water district is not allowed to do anything to move it. And that was to stop his land from flooding. But then once again, the water goes into the communities. And so um, I was reading up on this and I just thought this was, wow, this is like Yellowstone method yeah, type of stuff going totally. on. And then this morning's headline in the Business Journal says that now there's a threat of arrest. So um, Mr. Mitchell, he is- Not, not me. Not you. Not me. <laughs> uh, Jack Mitchell, he is Deer Creek's uh, water district. He is uh, the head of that. And he's but he was receiving calls saying that if you move it, we're gonna arrest you. So they he this poor guy in the community, they've been calling our governors, our senators, they've been calling Newsom's office and anyone that might be able to help the community because they I mean if they don't get help, they're gonna end up all underwater. And this is just a piece of a piece of it. This is nothing compared to what's gonna happen once the the snow starts melting and to quote jack mitchell he said this is just a baby flood compared to what we'll see later this spring because we basically had a snowmageddon this year yes what a change of events going from mega drought over the past many years to now we have more water than we know what to do with and just look at all the chaos that it's causing oh yeah it just really it, it was really interesting i liked uh jack mitchell's response when he found out he it says Gore's men discovered that someone had purposely cut the banks at the Road 88 crossing. He found muddy tracks from heavy equipment leading away from the hole and toward an equipment yard in early Mart. And he says, son's a bitch, said a clearly stunned Mitchell. Ain't that something? And I, I just Gets got to a, the point. Yes, I, I just got a kick out of that. I can, tell, I can see this whole thing happening on Yellowstone. <laughs> so anyway, we'll have to stay tuned for what's going to happen next. I'm, I'm curious oh to find goodness, out. My, my heart just story. goes out to the people out there because there's not that many living in the community, but that's their home. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So last week we briefly touched on chat GPT. And Linda asked uh, for me to go into a little bit more detail on it this week. So I wanted to just kind of cover a few things that it can be used for and the things that it is being used for. Um, just, you may know just at a high level, I mean, for instance, let me just give you one example. You can take, and I'm using this book as an example. So this is a really good book called uh, Influence the Psychology of Persuasion, which is a really good book for any salesperson. But you can tell ChatGPT to summarize any book that you want in 10 bullet points. And then say you're going to a party or something and you want to kind of be up on, maybe it's even a book club. <laughs> 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 summarize this book for me and boom, you, you put it in there and it'll do that. Um, I came across a really interesting extension for Chrome. Uh, the browser uh, over the last week <laughs> since we last spoke. And this has been out, I think, for a month or maybe two months. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just found out about it last week. It's called AI PRM for Chat GPT. Hmm. And if you go to, um, just go to Google and, and you search for AI PRM for Chat, um, Chat GPT, and then you download that extension to your browser, 
And one of the things first off is I've noticed the last few times I've gone into chat GPT, it's been busy. So there's so many people oh. going onto the platform right now. It says that it is at capacity and you need to wait. So the news is out. Yeah. And so it, it'll basically put you in a queue. It can notify you when your time is up. <laughs> One of the things I've noticed uh, since I downloaded this extension for Chrome, I get in right away. So mm -hmm. I no nice. longer have to wait. But it has a lot of really powerful tools for mm -hmm. SEO. Um, that you can use. What's SEO for those that don't know? Well, that's search engine optimization. So anytime that you write a blog post or something like that, you want to keyword thread it. So it, it basically helps your website to rank. Uh, the pages on your website, you <clears throat> want them to rank so that Google sees that your content and it serves it up for people when they go in the, and they search for something. So when you log in, there's multiple pages because uh, since ChatGPT is open source, people mm -hmm. keep adding mm -hmm. basically little applications. This is the first page. You can see first page of 20. So look at, look at what we're seeing right here. Human written, 100% unique SEO optimized article. Um, Outrank article, fully SEO optimized article, including fre frequently um, asked questions. Keyword strategy, that one's really important. Very Look at cool. this. Um, write a complete book in one click. Oh my gosh. Or YouTube <laughs> script creator. Uh, one of the things that is very interesting and is getting a lot of attention right now is the Outrank article. Okay. Okay. What that is, and you make your, your own judgments mm -hmm. on this, but you can take, I mean, chat GPT is, it's going to be putting people out of business. I mean, people that are SEO creators for websites, for, um, there's a, like, you go onto Fiverr, there's a lot of people that write blog posts yes, to drive that, SEO. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Yes. Yeah, so what Outrank article does is you can search for any key topic. Um, so what I searched for was uh, best home decor items for 2023. And then I asked it to um, give me um, some some ideas for, for blog post titles and, mm -hmm. and things like that. You can see right here, it comes up with transform your home with three. Look at all these. Yeah, there's um, tons. It's, I mean, just like that. Uh, but what Outrank article does is you can go to, so if this is, what are the, the, the best home decor items for 2023? You search that in Google. Mm -hmm. And then the top rank ranked articles are mm -hmm. going to pop up. Mm -hmm. You can take the, the very top ranked article for SEO. So first page of Google, mm -hmm. you, you copy the URL and then you open up chat GPT. You go into outrank article and you drop you it in. Tap that, you put that in there and it rewrites the article completely rewrites it gives wow. you gives you new um h1 headers and things like that it, and it sounds very cool very amazing very sweet thing to use and at the same time it's, it's, a, it's a little, little scary it's a little creepy <laughs> uh it's definitely it's a, it's better than a human yeah did i just say that it's, yeah it, it is um there's also other things like for instance it has all kinds of things in here uh, you know, stories on Instagram mm -hmm. are really big right now. If right. you want to go in, you can you can go into the Instagram 15 second short script um, button, click on that, give it an idea. So I typed in why you should use a realtor to sell your home and it quickly popped up. Uh, why, why use a realtor to sell your home? The answer seems obvious, right? They have experience, knowledge and yada, yada, yada. Right. But the fact of the matter is, if you're trying to come up with some script items for a video that you want to do, well, you basically yeah. ask it the question and boom, it's going to give you some ideas. If you don't like the answer that it gives you, then you just hit the regenerate button mm -hmm. and it pops up with a new one. That's cool. Very cool. Yeah. And there's a couple more things here. Um, keyword strategy. So keywords are important. If you want to know what the keywords are for this area, I typed in Fresno real estate and it came up with titles. So anytime, for instance, Linda, when we, when we post a blog on our website, we have to go in there and we put keywords in there. We put a title in there mm -hmm. and then there's also a meta description. So when people are searching for things and you get all the responses back, mm -hmm. that's the, the metadata that is the meta descriptions. That's that little tiny description that it gives you before you click on the article. Right. And what it does is it's giving you the best titles and the best meta descriptions to you so that you rank 
at the top and you know you get your article clicked on you could also use this to go through and optimize each of the pages on your website for for seo optimization so that's another thing that i that's where i'm i'm talking about this could put people out of business all right um one more example is the instagram carousel topic idea so you know the instagram carousels where you have pictures that you mm -hmm. swipe through mm -hmm. uh, i went in there and i typed uh, again home decor projects for 2023 and it gave me i think 10 um slides so for instance number one it says uh, welcome to the future of home decor and then the content for that one picture was a warm welcome to the audience with a brief explanation of Carousel's theme and what they expect from the following slides. And then it tells you what image to post. Okay. Uh, a futuristic home decor setup with modern furniture and tech gadgets. So you would search for an image like that. And then at the end, it even tells you what your Instagram post is gonna be. And it even puts emojis mm -hmm. and it puts hashtags. Isn't that crazy? No. And it does it just like, mm -hmm. just like that. So, it so, can be used. I think cool. we're only scratching the surface for what it can be used for right now. Absolutely. But there's a lot of power in this tool. Well, and technology is just moving at a very rapid rate. And I don't know that we'll ever be right on top moving with it. We're always going to be a little behind. Yeah. And it it's just feels a little... Yeah. Not right. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's like, it's cool, but then it's like, eh, yeah, I don't know about this. It's yeah. a little not right. But anyways, here's the uh, mortgage rates from Mortgage News Daily as of today. As of today, mm -hmm. our 30-year fixed is 6.75. Our 15-year is 6.17. We have our... Back up from last week FA, a little bit. FHA is 6.2. So yes, they did go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I also pulled some information from the California Association of Realtors um, website and they had some numbers and something that was really interesting to me said that at the regional level all regions except the central valley continue to record sales declines of more than 30 percent from a year ago and so i thought that was really interesting so i really went in and decided i'd look to see because todd said well wait a minute central valley includes sacramento and i thought well, well from california association, from california Realtors, association they do the data that they use and so i went on and i checked and sure enough he's correct i'll kind of show you a little bit these are the locations that they include and there's locations in here for example glenn county that's way up north uh, placer county also way up north and then we have Sacramento and then San Benito is out by Solano Beach area. Mm -hmm. That's not even close. And well, if you look at those prices, just real quick, if you look at the prices like the um, in February, the sales price, the average was 633 for Placer for Placer and for Sacramento 499 and San Benito 730,000 for our counties like Fresno, Kern, Kings, Madera, Merced. Our average isn't even over 400. Yeah, that's double our, that's close to double our average. So. so what I did is I went in to try to get a better view of what our numbers really look like. I eliminated those four areas that were the Sacramento and then out Solano Beach in that area. And I just included the eight counties that are nearby. And our medium price was at um, 391000 <coughs> 75 over the eight counties for February. So which ones are that, in, is that for, including? For February, it, it includes Fresno, Kern, Kings, Madera, Merced, San Joaquin, Stanislaus, mm. and Tulare County. Okay. And then, so for 2023, for February, our, medi our medium sold price was 391, almost 392. But for February of 2022, last year, before rates went up, our medium price was 398.5. <laughs> So there's only like an $8,000 difference between 2022 of February and this year. So that's really not that big of a difference for our Central Valley. And then for January, the month of January for this year, our medium price was 383. Uh, so that's not that's not a big that that's actually a small increase from february yeah when you average all those counties together yes mm -hmm. and so i just thought that this was more accurate for us and what we're looking at and our prices here we've got some stability and so to me that says we should you know our buyers and sellers 
should not allow what's happening in the rest of the state to, you know, have them pull away from wanting to purchase or sell because our Central Valley area, our true Central Valley area, we're doing really well and we are not doing what the rest of the state is. So, well, plus we're starting to see some um, loan, creative loan item like down payment assistance programs that are starting to make a, a resurgence which is good because people need that right and then um, there is a new program that is going to be available in the state of california and it is to help uh, first-time home buyers they're going to be able to get as much as 20 percent down there's criteria income that's huge i know there's income levels that have to be met and then of course credit score uh, numbers that have to be met uh, and also on that program, there's only a limited amount of funds available mm. for those buyers. So if you're a first time home buyer and you've been waiting and you haven't been sure that you have the down payment or you don't have the down payment, right now is the time to call your lender, to call your real estate agent, call us if you don't have either, and we can guide you in the right direction because if you wait on this, the funds are going to run out and you're not even going to get 5% yeah. for your People down are going to use it quick. Do they owe the money back? Uh, they do over a period of time. It depends on how long they hold on to the property. So, so what if they live there eight years? I don't have all the specifics and I believe some of them are still being worked on. This is not going to be rolled out until March 27th. I think the last time we saw stuff like this was back in 2015. 20, it's yes. been a long time. That's when Wells Fargo had a really good program for down payment assistance. And we had a buyer that actually received, I believe, over twenty. it was over $20,000 for their down payment. And they only had to stay in the house, I think it was five years. And then they didn't have to repay it. And we actually just sold their house last year and they didn't have to repay it. They had been there yeah. long enough. And they had... A like a two hundred thousand dollar equity gain on the house in, in those seven, six, uh, seven years, which is huge with no money down. So common sense for today is it's a, still a great time to buy, especially if you live in the Central Valley. There's a lot of options for you. So reach out to us and don't wait, because if you're waiting for things to get worse, it's not going to happen. If you're waiting for things to get better, this is as good as it's yeah, going to get. Free money is free money. That's right. No matter how you shake a stick at it. <laughs> 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 All right. Until next week, we will, uh, we'll see. I hope you have a good time with whatever you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thanks for joining us this week on the Coffee and Common Sense Podcast with Todd and Linda. We hope you had a good time and look forward to seeing you all next week.